I'm a kid for a minute. The name is Bond. James Bond. James Bond. You lost 007. Killing ticket was a mistake. You're about to make the same mistake twice. But where are that video review? Hey there, welcome to another Lemon Commodore 64 play guide and review. This week, we'll be taking a look at Operation Fireball, developed by Sean Southern and published by Alternative Software in 1987. begins with some thematic music shaped on the James Bond theme of course and yes Operation Fireball absolutely nothing to do with Thunderball and all the other James Bond movies. Of course this was an unofficial unlicensed game and this was modelled on the James Bond genre, not just the latest movie out around that time, which was The Living Daylights, which was 1987, and I think this has been more modelled on A View to a Kill, which appeared in 1985. You can see the background graphics give us some idea of the gameplay itself, which is split over five levels, one of which takes us across a stretch of water. So let's press that fire button, let's check this game out. Operation Fireball, where you take control of a character not unlike James Bond, who drives a red Lotus Esprit not unlike James Bond, and in this game we have to make our way from the left hand side to the right hand side, taking on all these enemies thanks to our automatic laser gun, and that may have been taken from a James Bond movie. You can see we have to avoid oil on the road, and ice as well, and occasionally we will find homing missiles which will try to arc across that screen, and also helicopters dive bombing us from the sky. We can make our way by simply holding down that fire button, and that's a great mechanic, because jamming this fire button would make this game very hard indeed, but the very fact that you can hold down the fire button doesn't make the game any easier because you are still being attacked by this onslaught of enemies. And yes, you won't get a driving ticket for blowing up all these pedestrians. All that will happen is you will gain a few score points. And the score in this game is very measly and we're only just broken into the 200 barrier, which is great. And you can see these backgrounds are pretty slim and the gameplay itself is pretty easy to negotiate. Perhaps a little like the spy who loved me, we have to escape from our car and now ride on a jet ski or in this case a speedboat, but it is a very small speedboat so I prefer to think that, that is a jet ski. And we move our way across this lake, avoiding another onslaught of missiles and more helicopters, and in this case some more boats which we'll try to get in our way. We can see some parallax in the background and that gives us a nice perspective that we are making our way, but the backgrounds do not change from level 1, and we can see that the format of the game does not change throughout. If we are hit by anything on the screen then our shield power will go down and if we leave that alone that will recharge automatically very slowly on the top of that screen and you can see after a few hits that soon wipes itself down to halfway and so any more than four hits in a row and you are dead and so you have to treat this game with a little bit of respect 
because those aiming helicopters above will aim directly on target and if you are hovering in the same place for any amount of time then you will be trapped by either the missiles or the bombs so even though I'm making this game look very easy at the moment you notice that I haven't not posed for one split second and my joystick is careering around in circles trying to avoid all this stuff Flipping off our speedboat, we happen to land on a pair of skis and now we can attempt Olympic Skier Mark II. Yes, this game was coded by the same guy who created the Olympic Skier on the Commodore 64 and, well, similar graphics are abound. You can see the return of the missiles and oil as well and you also have to negotiate these trees. If you collide with those then that's a major hit, just like a bomb, and they will wipe us out very quickly. So, yet again, I'm having to stay on the move and avoid all this stuff and try to stay away from the very top of that screen to avoid the bombs and try to stop being trapped in that bottom corner as well because you can see when those helicopters rain down we have to keep moving forward and you also have to negotiate all these other attackers so it's not an easy game and it does require some measure of great skill and great gameplay to even get this far background we can hear various sound effects and on the skiing level we gain something that is supposed to sound like our skier and on the car level we gain the basic drone of that engine but the other sound effects are simply us blowing things up on that screen and that's not such a bad thing although there is no music we certainly get a jingle at the end of each level Flipping off our skis we find what looks like an ATV but in actual fact that's supposed to be a bike and so now it's back to the roads where we face even more of those enemies Unfortunately it sounds like the drone of our bike is stuck in first gear just like Action Biker and well we reviewed that game it's certainly much more exciting and much more 3D than this although Action Biker did not require us to move around the screen like a fly trapped in a window. But that's the aim of this game, you cannot pause for one second and, well, this is really a child's game so children should be able to master this game eventually and even adults will have a great workout trying to maneuver their joystick around these things and trying to battle against all these enemies. In the heat of battle you don't really notice the shields and it's very tough concentration simply to look forward and try to avoid all those things. Sometimes if we stray to the very left of that screen we can avoid some of these missiles but not all of those and sometimes we'll just have to take a number of hits and if we stray to the left unfortunately we run out of room to avoid those bombs so I try to stay around the middle of that screen as much as possible and then I can dive out of the way of whatever is arriving on that screen. I think it's great that we have an end of level sequence and a cutscene in between those which are quite funny and do we swim? No, we actually fly in a helicopter and now we can use a helicopter but unfortunately we cannot fly in the sky, we can only use that in the lake. So let's use that to avoid another onslaught of missiles and similar helicopters trying to attack and in this case it's even more difficult because you have to weave in between all these things and if you don't blow up those helicopters they will block us from moving through those so you have to hold down that fire button and be on constant alert and if the player can get a rhythm together through this section then it's actually quite easy but having said that you can still see me taking hit after hit even trying to avoid all this firepower so it definitely demands respect and it's not a pushover this game you will have your dexterity tested and you will have a good time playing this even though it only takes 10 minutes to complete this game from end to end A 
all the player has to do is to not get hit for a period of time and then that allows the shield to build all the way up and give them all that shield for nothing and that means that they can take a few more hits and that's great but unfortunately the background again sounds more like a jet fighter than a helicopter and I think the sound effects in this game which were hand coded of course along with the music by Sean Southern I think they could have been a little bit better right at the end of the game a submarine will appear at random somewhere on that screen and you have to fly out and get that to complete it mission is complete we return to HQ and then we can leave H and Q behind as we set off yet again and loop the game infinitely. Yes there is an infinite loop in this game and there is no high score table but you can see it registers our high score in the top right corner. game loops you'll find the levels do not get any harder or anything else appearing on those which makes those harder. We certainly do not have a time limit either and the game actually memorizes the time taken that we've taken in this game and so the more we survive the more time we will get and you can see that this game was based on a number of James Bond movies. You can see the box art reveals a helicopter and a skier perhaps from a view to a kill, a speedboat perhaps from a live and let die and the submarine, well that's appeared in many James Bond movies, in fact The Spy Who Loved Me contained a very nice submarine and perhaps that was the inspiration for this game and of course back in the 1980s the James Bond genre was very hot still in the cinema and we were actually waiting for the next James Bond, Timothy Dalton, to appear in the movies when this game was released and the, as I say, Living Daylights was released in June of 1987 can see that although the graphics are pretty basic they certainly do the job and there is no lag or slowdown in this game which spoils it everything is action-packed and there is no bugs to spoil any of the action all the graphics were drawn, all the music was created and the sound effects and all the code was created by Sean Southern, one half of Mr Chip software and this wasn't a part of Mr Chip, this was a solo project of Sean's. He probably got the gun firing mechanism from Duck Shoot which he launched on the VIC-20 and converted to the Commodore 64 in 1984. The skier, the helicopter and the rocks came from Olympic Skier from 1984. The driving, well the background certainly came from Formula One Sim which was a Mr Chip software released through Mastertronic in 1985. The bike could arguably come from Kickstart and certainly the side scrolling comes from Kickstart released in 1985 and the animation of the man running probably was inspired by Hero of the Golden Talisman which he released in 1985. So all of those games rolled together created this one in 1987 and of course after this he moved on to games such as Lotus Esprit Turbo Challenge and Kid Chaos on the Amiga and many rally championship games on the PC. Sean Southern actually began on the Commodore 16 plus 4 machine and so you can see his heritage from that humble beginning has created games like this. Apart from my emulator putting lines on that screen there are no graphics glitches and I think this game is well coded and certainly fun for 10 minutes. There were no magazine reviews, but this has a currently 5.5 out of 10 on the Lemon 64 database. You can see if you stop firing, or if you get out of that rhythm, or collide with too many things, then you'll die. And that's the end of this game. 
Thank you for checking out another Lemon 64 play guide and review. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Grandfather calling you. What's the position? 007 alive.